to Monroe Mustangs. I'm your host, David Spiegel. And ladies and gentlemen, it finally happened. We had sports this week. I'm recording this on Monday, of course, Monday, March 22nd. And we just finished our first week of athletic competition in New Rochelle. Uh, the Mustangs baseball team played Sidious Prep on Wednesday. That went well. They were 1-0. They then went out to Suffolk on Friday and beat them. It's 2-0. And then on Saturday, they went to Lackawanna. Had a tough time in the first game, took their first loss, but then bounced back in a big way. A lot of offense in that game, and they won that one. So they're 3-1 and one after their first week. Softball team played as well this weekend, playing four games. Unfortunately, they went 4-0, but things are going to turn around soon, I'm sure. So we got through our first week. It went, you know, it went smoothly, to say the least. Um, you know, we had some, some good YouTube live streams. I know uh, softball had a lot of good reactions. Baseball was... Uh, a bit of a test run, to, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we used the I used the wrong computer in the first inning of that game on Wednesday, and uh, it didn't look good. And our camera got unplugged a couple times during that game. But you know, first day, first day, we got to uh, just roll with the punches there, and we'll we'll be fine going forward. Don't you worry. Um, we got we got some more games on on the docket this week. Baseball teams on the road pretty much every single day this week. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then on the weekend as well. Uh, softball, we'll see. Right now, they're only scheduled to play on Sunday, a doubleheader, uh, at home against Nassau, but maybe we'll add a couple games here and there. We'll see. It's the spring season. Uh, it's a weird year, so games are being added left and right. Make sure you're checking MonroeCollegeMustang.com for schedule updates and our social media pages as well. We're going to be all over that. I promise you we'll, we'll keep you updated, and we're going to continue giving you the best coverage possible. I keep saying we, but honestly, it's me right now, um, you know working as hard as I can to uh, give you the best production possible. So hopefully you all enjoyed this past week. I appreciate everyone who tuned in to our live streams, watching uh, watching baseball on Wednesday, watching softball over the weekend. Those went really well. You know, again, on my end, they went really well. Um, you know, so we're going to keep doing it. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get a lot busier come April. We add the Monroe Express to the list as well. Excited to get them going. And everyone's working really hard to make sure our seasons get off without a hitch. You know, soccer's coming soon, track and field. We're both going to be starting the first, well, actually, men's soccer, track and field in New Rochelle, and then all the express teams are getting ready to start that first week of April. So pretty soon we're going to be, we're going to be really busy um, in the best kind of way. You know, we were, we were waiting a long time to get to this point and we're here and we're going to get through the season. It's going to be great. You know, men's soccer is still the defending national champions. Let's not forget that. They are the most recent team to win that NJCAA championship. So they're defending. They're, they're hoping to get back there and, and defend their title. Baseball team is still two-time defending East District champions. So they're looking to get back to the JUCO World Series. And, you know, they're, we're going to see how the season goes. But it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a challenge come the postseason. And they're going to do what they can. But I know the team is confident right now. You know, they're hitting the ball. Uh, the pitchers have been pretty good. For the most part so far and you know it's it's early you know it's been a little chilly friday was frigid for them out there in suffolk but they did a really good job and we're starting to get some nice weather over here in in, in new rochelle and new york all over the place so hopefully we're looking at some good weather the rest of the way and we don't really have any weather getting in our way of any games um so anyway we're continuing our national athletic training month series this week we're on the last week of it so, you know, uh, I hope everyone has gone back and watched all of our trainers so far this week. This week, I welcome on Amanda Voita, who is the new kid on the block at Monroe. She's the most recently hired athletic trainer. She joined the Monroe Express athletic training staff, um, sports medicine staff, to be more official, uh, during, during the pandemic, which is, of course, a really hard time to come on board. You know, I think, I believe she started in August. She jumped right in. She was working hand-in-hand -hand with Morgan, and the two of them have really, you know, gotten the COVID protocols in place. They're working really hard, getting getting that social media page as well for the for the uh, Monroe Sports Med done as well. They just created a new TikTok. Go look out for that. And, you know, they're doing a little a lot of really good things. Amanda's really been helping out Morgan a lot. And she had a really weird start because she really wasn't able to go face to face with any athletes. And that's most of the job for athletic trainers. You know, a lot of her a lot of her start was planning and virtual meetings and you know just kind of getting familiar with the department with nobody being around so you know it's going to be it's going to be interesting now that athletes are in for the monroe express have started practicing as of this past week um you know a lot of workouts going on so 
I'm sure she she's really in the thick of it now, and it's probably a little more normal, more more of what the athletic trainers are used to. I think that's what we're all experiencing right now is that it's kind of a shock going back to some of the things we used to be doing. Of course, you know the safety protocols are in place. We're still working hard to make sure everyone stays healthy and stays you know on the field as well when when they're ready to and practicing hard and you know pretty soon we're going to be full swing we're going to get there all of rc teams the jv teams are going to be going really soon it's going to be busy but it's going to be fun so that's it from me this week thank you for listening to my opening rant and i hope you enjoy my interview with monroe express assistant athletic trainer amanda voita ladies and gentlemen please welcome my guest a trainer for the monroe express amanda voita Hello, thank you for having me today. Thanks for joining me, Amanda. Amanda, you're kind of the new kid on the block here at Monroe. Um, among all of our athletic training staff, you're the most recent to come on board. And I'm going to get into that shortly, but um, it's a, you know, a greater opportunity to introduce yourself. So tell us a little bit about you, uh, how you found athletic training and how you turned it into a career. Sure. So um, I am from Orange County, New York. Uh, I got committed freshman year to play soccer at East Strasburg University in Pennsylvania. And throughout fall season, um, we were doing really well in sports and I had to choose basically between athletic training or soccer. And um, I unfortunately had to quit after my freshman freshman year, but you know, uh, I'm glad I did because athletic training, I had no idea what it was, but I developed a passion for it the longer I stayed in the program. So it's a, it's a nice career. It's great. Of course, you, you graduated, graduated, excuse me, graduated from East Stroudsburg a couple of years ago, um, and then you got your master's there as well, I see. Um, so, you know, you made, made quick, quick, quick work of the education to get yourself to this point. So uh, where did you end up after graduating that, you know, again, started your career in athletic training? So I was uh, at ESU for my master's program in 2019. And I started working with uh, a big hospital out there that farms out athletic trainers. And around December of 2018, 2019, uh, a job came up for Westchester Community College. So I jumped on it because I was gonna be residing in New York after uh, I was done with my master's program anyway. So I needed to find a job. So uh, I started off at WCC and that's how I met Morgan. She would come to some of our games and you know, I would you know, made a connection, got her number. And um, yeah, just during out of nowhere, like over August, um, she reached out to me and was like, hey, we're looking for an athletic trainer. You want to come to Monroe? And uh, I just jumped on it. You know, it's, it's times are tough and you just got to do what you got to do. <laughs> of course. And, and of course, Westchester Community College is basically right down the road from uh, us in New Rochelle and uh, not too far from the Bronx. It's a men- member of Region 15. So uh, both of our athletic programs actually play Westchester pretty fre- frequently. So very familiar with them and a lot of their staff over there. But then you found your way over to Monroe during a pandemic, which is not something that the athletic trainers have you know, ever wanted to deal with or ever thought you'd have to deal with. But it's a very tough time. It's a, it's a very big challenge. So what was it like jumping in during all this and some of the things you had to do right off the bat that were probably a lot different than what you've done in the past? Yeah, so uh, March this time last year, I was down in uh, Florida with soft, uh, baseball doing spring training and everything shut down. Uh, and I was unemployed from March till Morgan reached out to me. So it was a, a very humbling um, experience for her to have to reach out to me and, and to be able to have a job today with Monroe. Um, and, you know, basically there's, there's, there's no set guidelines. There's no rule book on to how to do athletics during a pandemic. So, uh, you know, we're, we're taking all the guidelines in from CDC, from New York, from other states, from how other colleges are doing it, NCAA, you name it. And we're just compiling them together to make our own guidelines and policies and procedures to move forward and hopefully continue to play. So I actually, you know, right before recording this episode, I was uh, interviewing Morgan as well. And I, the two of you have really been on top of the COVID-19 pandemic. And I know it's different because the two of you are in the Bronx and it's a little bit different. You know, it's a commuter campus and it's hard to keep track of where all the athletes are. Unlike New Rochelle, where a lot of the athletes are, you know, coming to New Rochelle, they're quarantining for a while and then they're in the dorms. So we can, it's easier to keep track of everyone and, you know, make sure they're staying in their pods and not doing anything that might, you know, get them sick and, and um, affect others. But it's a much bigger challenge in the Bronx. So First off, I want to say, you know, I, I've, I've learned a lot from the two of you over the fa- past few months, um, especially recently as we get back to playing. But um, 
you guys have really been, you know, learning so much and teaching us so much. So obviously, you know, it hasn't been easy and you've been very busy doing all that. And now we're getting ready to return to play. Um, you know, beginning of April is going to be when the Monroe Express actually gets back to competition. But uh, the middle of March, March 15th is the date that uh, we're starting practice. We're recording before this, but by the time this airs, it'll have already started. So hopefully it's going off without a hitch. I'm sure it is. Um, what are some of the, the bigger challenges you see dealing with the, the pandemic and getting through competition for the next two months? Yeah, you know, um, I think this just things just change so quickly. You know, we could write a policy on one thing and in the next day something changes, something gets revised, something new is added and things just constantly are changing. Uh, new situations come up that people might not have thought of and now we have to figure out a new way to handle that situation. So I just think there's a lot of uh, broadness in what there is and you're just trying to hone on the key things but there's still so much more to it that like you can't, you can't predict everything, you know? And you're so early on in your career, so I'm hoping that you have a nice long career after this where this is kind of an afterthought, but what are some of the things that you may have learned during the past few months, uh, just dealing with the pandemic and, and challenging yourself to, you know, to learn new things and teach new things and just different ways of doing athletic training? Like, some, what, are the, what are some of the biggest takeaways you think you'll take from all this? Um, I definitely learned a lot over the pandemic, just being grateful for the life situation I'm in. And, you know, there are others who have it a lot harder than I do. And, you know, it's just unfortunate, but uh, I definitely think like moving forward, you know, that's just a, a scope that I'm going to have on to make sure I understand every situation of every person that I'm dealing with, because you never know where people are coming from or what they've been through. So um, it's definitely just taking, you know, each person for who they are and what they bring to the table. Now, since you were only here in August, we haven't seen any competition in your time here at Monroe yet. So what are some things you're looking forward to as we, we finally get back to action here? Watching sports. <laughs> I'm just excited to be back on the sideline. You know, I never wanted, you know, that job where you're just in an office and I'm excited to just be able to just watch sports. I grew up playing sports and that's why I stayed in this career. And it's just, it's been a long year without sports. <laughs> Absolutely has been, you know, same thing on, on my end. It's just, I'm so used to spending so many nights and weekends, you know, with our home games and away games. And it, it's been none of that for the past really cool calendar year at this point. So I'm mm -hmm. um, excited to get back to that on my end as well. Um, of course, you know, I'm working with both campuses. So for New Rochelle, the start date for competition is March 16th. So again, I think by the time this is already aired, we'll have already had a few games. So um, you know, again, hopefully going very well. And uh you know, what, you know, it's, it's been a different experience. You know, I, I've talked to some of the athletic trainers about the relationships they've built up with student athletes, having, you know, working with them every single day, seeing them all in their office all day long. And things have obviously been different for you so far, because, you know, we really can't have 20 athletes in the athletic training room at the same time. And you can't really interact with them too often one-on-one. -on -one. So, um, you know, what's it sort of been like getting acclimated with the student athletes and uh, how do you see it? changing over the next couple of months as well as we really, you know, get back to work. They're all on campus all often and uh, you really get to know them a little better. I think it actually gives us a great opportunity to be able to um, be more one on one because a lot of times we get this rush of athletes before our practice and we have to quickly try and do this quickly take this one quickly do a rehab with that one where I think with these moving forward with these uh, scheduling of appointments, I think that it's a great opportunity for us to get a more keen rehab for certain athletes that really need that time devoted to them. And of course, uh, you and Morgan helped lead the way, getting us on social media at Monroe Sportsman on Instagram, um, just helping educate athletes and whoever else is following, um, you know, over the last couple of months as you've been doing that, you know, guys, you guys are doing themed weeks and there have been different videos and graphics that have been really helpful. Um, so what's, what's your favorite part of that been so far? Uh, I think athletic trainers as a whole are very misunderstood. I think our name is very thrown off that we think that we train athletes when we are way more than that. Um, so I think it's a great uh, advocating point for us to be, you know, we, we do a lot more than just tape ankles and give out ice and give water. You know, there's a lot more to our education behind what we do. So I think this, the sports medicine page helped us 
show people that if you don't know who we are, this is what we do. And this is also some of our background in education that a lot of our stuff is evidence-based through clinical trials and stuff like that, that like a lot of people don't see and don't understand and don't hear because we can't use that language towards them because they don't understand it, you know? So I think that um, the sports medicine page might've opened that light to a lot of people. I agree. And just as someone keeping an eye on it myself, you know, I actually thought I'd have to be more involved and you guys have really taken such a big lead on that. It's been, you know, I don't have to do anything with it other than share your posts when, uh, when I have the opportunity to. So I, I think you guys have done a really good job. And um, I think on behalf of a lot of the staff and student athletes as well, we really appreciate everything that you guys have been doing, especially in the past year. And especially, you know, we, when, since you've come on the last number of months, just working so hard to make sure that we get to this point where we can start competition and, you know, it being National Athletic Training Month. And of course, why we're doing this series with all the trainers this month. Um, I think it's good to take the time to you know, show our appreciation to all the hard work you do. And especially right now, you know, you're coming face to face every single day with the pandemic, especially, you know, every time you step on campus and you're in the office that, um, you know, you're, you're putting yourself in the line of fire. So obviously it's something that um, not everyone has to do. You know, some of us are lucky or lucky enough to work from home for the most part. But, uh, uh, you know, again, I just I, I think, you know, you guys have been doing such a wonderful job and um, you know, you've answered a lot of my questions over the last number of weeks to just make sure that we're ready to go, you know, things that I don't necessarily know about, you know, you're keeping a closer eye on the CDC protocols and New York State and what the college is doing, helping develop the college plans. Um, you know, I just definitely want to say on behalf of everyone else, thank you for everything that you've been doing. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> and of course, you know, everyone at home, uh, take, I hope you take away a lot from this, uh, learning a lot about what the trainers do about our trainers, how hard they work. Um, Amanda, if there's anything else you want to say to everybody, uh, you know, if there's a message you want to pass along, you know, please feel free. Uh, just stay safe out there, you know, it's, it's, we're hopefully seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And, uh, you know, maybe this time next year we'll be a full swing athletics and the pandemic will be behind us. <laughs> I hope so. And, you know, like you said, you know, stay safe, everyone keep doing your diligence, uh, wear your mask, keep your distance, wash your hands. You know, we've, we've worked so hard to get to this point. We want to make sure it goes off without a hitch. We want to make sure our fall season is as normal as possible. Um, you know, of course, there'll, there'll still be some restrictions, I'm sure, come August, September, but I think we'll be We'll have a good feel for how we need to do things. And I think uh, it's going to be very successful as long as everyone plays their part. Um, so again, Amanda, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm glad we get to know you a little bit better. And we're going to be seeing a lot more of you now that we're actually back to work. Um, you know, those of you at home, make sure you're, you're checking out this whole National Athletic Training Month series. You know, look back on the archives on YouTube, youtube.com slash Monroe Mustangs. Um, check us out on IGTV at Monroe Mustangs. This will hopefully be shared as well on at Monroe Sports Med and at Monroe Express as well with you being special, you know, especially in the Bronx. Um, you can also listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts. Again, everyone, thank you so much for hanging with us this time. Stay safe, wear your mask, keep your distance and take care of yourselves. Amanda, thank you again. I'll be seeing you soon. Thank you for having me. Monroe Mustangs is sponsored by the Monroe Mustang Sideline Store powered by our apparel partners at BSN Sports. Whether you're looking for t-shirts, hats, jackets, or accessories, the Monroe Mustang Sideline Store has it all. Gear up with the new Monroe Mustangs logo and make it your own with hundreds of customizable options, including sports-specific designs. For the month of March, you can take 20% off all orders of $80 or more using the promo code MARCH21. That's M-A-R-C-H-2-1. Visit MonroeCollegeMustangs.com slash shop to look your best as you cheer on the Mustangs.